Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm showing you some of my favorite wrist stretches and strengthening exercises for athletes to help keep those hands and wrists functioning at their highest for your sport. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get much better than that, so take advantage of it. Ready? Let's get into this one. All right, guys, the topic of the day, my favorite wrist, hand, and forearm mobilities as well as some strengthening exercises for that grip strength overall. So our forearms and hands are constantly getting beat up when we are training in the gym. Pressure from push-ups, bench press, that type of thing. So compression forces on it and just overall gripping all the time. Kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, that kind of stuff. We need to give the hands and wrists some attention to make sure that they are functioning at their highest and really getting the most out of that grip that we possibly can. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys today with the mobility exercises, how to help those hands and wrists recover and consistently perform at their best, as well as some of my favorite go-to strength exercises that will go along with that. Now, if you guys are here looking to improve your overall mobility, make sure you take a moment and drop by the description down below and sign up for my seven day mobility training challenge. It's seven days of pre-programmed out mobility sessions that are about 15 minutes long, no equipment necessary, and essentially it is a litmus test from head to toe to show you where you're missing range of motion, flexibility, and motor control pat patterning and stability in there. So these are all things that could be playing into any uh, reoccurring training aches, pains, or injuries that you really end up with reoccurringly. Um, and that is what we're taking a look at as well as I give you a miniature approach to mobility as to how we would wanna work our way back out of that with a order to that system. So take advantage of it, it's completely free. You can sign up today and get started today. And that is down below in the description. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start looking at these wrist mobilities and strength exercises. All right, the very first thing we're gonna do here is a self-applied wrist gapping technique. So I'm grabbing with my middle and thumb or index and thumb, and I'm creating separation just above the radius and ulna and right between that and the carpal. So here you'll see me squeeze a few times. That creates separation and space between those bones there. And that's what I want. Once I grip that with that pressure there, I wanna keep the left arm relaxed, or in this case, the left arm relaxed, and I'm manipulating that hand with my hand that is gripping at the wrist there, trying to work it through range of motion. Once I've done that, I like to work into traction of the fingers as well. It helps to relax the arm on something as much as possible so the muscles aren't tensing up and resisting that pull. It also helps to have someone do this for you. So if you have someone that's willing to kind of hang off your fingers, my 40 pound daughter works awesome for this. She loves to just grab a couple fingers and hang off. I don't even ask her to, so it's perfect setup there. Um, but she can apply a nice little traction effect there as well. So this is one way you can do it by yourself, but you can also have someone apply that traction for you, grabbing two fingers at a time, I suggest, and just kind of going from length there, trying to get as much separation as you can, almost as if there were rubber bands between each of those joints at the fingers. The last version of doing this here, you can interlace the fingers and control that hand by pulling first, creating space, and then working through range of motion. So we want the space first always, and then we work through the full range of motion as much as possible. Circles, uh, playing with that space as we work at the fingers there. So trying to feel where you can get any separation along that whole chain from the fingertips all the way into the elbow there and forearm. Again, this is a nice technique that you can use at any point of the day really just to kind of help with those wrists as frequently as possible. Now we're getting into some techniques here, mobilization techniques using bands. And here we're doing extension gapping. So I want that band anchored low 
with a bench out front so I can have a little bit of that pull at a downward angle. The first thing I really want to do here is plant the hand with the finger spread nice and wide here, opening up the hand as much as possible, even thinking of the thumb not having any bend to it. If anybody's trying to bend, we're gripping there and we need to relax some. I'm rolling my shoulder blades down and back, my elbows rotated in toward my ribs, and then I'm just seeing how deep I can actually extend over the wrist in this position. The idea is that the band at the back of the wrist there is providing space and creating a gap for me to actually move into that depth a little bit more. The second position that I'll work with this band here is actually a flexion gapping. So I put it on the inside of the wrist this time with my palm facing up to the ceiling. You'll see in both of these I'm using my free hand to pin that hand down. That's because I don't want to have to fight and resist that band back. So my hand is trapped under my own body weight there and I'm just letting that band pull in this position. Once again, shoulder blades rolled down and back. I'm always looking to get my elbow locked out and as straight as I can with it rotated in toward my body. So elbow rotates toward the ribs, shoulder blades rolled down and back. I have good positioning there. This helps us restore torque through the system of that hand and wrist there. The one last position I'm doing this here is I'll actually start in that, once again, extension gapped position but then I'll sit back and rotate so that the shoulder is fully extended and in external rotation while the wrist is in extension here. These are all things that you can build up to and take time with. This is a heavier band. You can also start with a lighter band to get up to this point, but here's where we wanna start uh, as far as positioning goes, and then you work up from there. And now that I've showed you a few of my favorite joint techniques, working back and restoring the joints, here we're going to look at some self-myofascial release techniques. So this is a great way to get into the small musculature of the hand, especially right there by the thumb when we do a lot of gripping, that muscle gets worked quite a bit. So what you want to do is drag that ball from the wrist toward the thumb and dragging that away from the body. So we want to think of length always, creating length and space as we're working with it. So we're putting pressure down and pulling that tissue away from the hand itself. And sometimes you'll even get some cracks and pops as you do this one. So that's something that you can work on there. Once you've kind of worked that thumb range on both sides there a bit, you can also work the carpals here as we go up into the palm a little bit. And you can see my knuckles themselves raising over the ball. And that's what we wanna see, separation right between there every time and some space so take your time rolling over it feel each knuckle raise as you roll and just let it sink in a little bit so relax over that ball as much as possible Next, voodoo floss. So here I'm wrapping up from the wrist through the forearm up toward the elbow here and tying off at the elbow itself. And we're gonna take it into a few passive ranges of motion. So again, we're going into extension of the wrist as deep as possible, similar to the banded distraction here. The nice thing about the voodoo floss is that I get compression of those soft tissues up above through the floor, forearm, which are controlling most of my wrist motions and my finger motions. So we're actually drawing good blood flow in there. We're helping with return blood flow. And the awesome benefit about blood flow restriction is that it actually stimulates growth hormone. So even though I'm not doing much in the sense of lifting weights at this point in time, even challenging it with restricted blood flow in these passive positions for a duration of two to five minutes activates that growth hormone and I can strengthen my wrists just by strengthening those soft tissues with restricted blood flow here. So that's one of the coolest things about this. So here we've got the back of the wrist down going back into flexion again. All these positions should look similar from the banded distractions that I showed earlier. And then I also do some active movements as well while that voodoo floss is on. So we wanna work passive range of motion and active range of motion. And one of the best places to do that is out at the side here. Right here I'm imagining I'm in between two pillars or between a door frame and I'm trying to push that door frame open. 
and I want to extend out through those palms as much as I can and then I'm going to curl down as much as I can. So once again working flexion and extension at shoulder height here. You might get some neurological signals in the hand themselves. You might feel the back of that arch where the thumb and the index are. You might feel those smaller fingers. That can actually tell us where there's restriction as far as which nerves might be getting a little bit impinged or aren't sliding as well through that forearm. So pay attention to that. And then the final thing I'll do is some circles while that's on there. And even some hanging is a great way to add in a little bit of traction while that is, once again, in that blood restricted state here. So gripping on one arm, you can do two arms if you're not able to hang from one hand at a time. But again, stimulating the growth hormone while the voodoo floss is on in a blood flow restricted state is a huge benefit for strengthening those forearms without have to, having to load up too much. So take advantage of it. And since we're on the topic of strengthening, let's go ahead and get right into that. Some of my favorite stuff to strengthen the forearms, that grip strength, is even just hanging pull-ups here, but making sure that I over grip on my pull-ups. So I actually try and grip so that there's an S shape to my wrist and my forearm. This is gonna strengthen those forearms quite a bit, being able to grip into that fascial line where the smallest fingers connect into your lats. That's an important thing. We're very strong in the thumb and index, but a lot of us lack strength when it comes out toward those smaller fingers, which can be a big problem when it comes down to carrying and lifting in general. Next, I love kettlebell stuff for grip strength simply because it requires you to understand how to control the bell with a good forearm positioning and wrist positioning. So a weak wrist positioning here would let that bell slide down the back of my forearm. But here you see me with a neutral wrist punching toward the ceiling the whole time and really controlling the grip of that kettlebell. That is a huge thing with kettlebells in general. So I love Turkish get-ups for that reason. You can do kettlebell presses and especially the bottoms up position is some of my favorite stuff here. So bottoms up presses from the floor to get started and just get comfortable. This is also great for your shoulder health, by the way. So there's that whole chain getting worked from the wrist down into the shoulder. This is called a screwdriver here, and I'm testing my ability to internally rotate and externally rotate that kettlebell while I hold it in that bottoms up position. So again, you can play with the varieties here. There's probably a million different varieties you can do, but these are just some examples of great ways that you can challenge your grip strength and build that forearm strength with your kettlebells here. And again, pretty much one of the best pieces of equipment to really build up your grip strength is a kettlebell in my opinion. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so if you couldn't tell by now, my recipe for grip strength is kettlebells, kettlebells, kettlebells as much as possible, especially in that bottoms up position. Just giving you a bunch of different ideas here with those kettlebell positions. But it's not the only thing that I do work on. The other piece to this is our functional movement patterns such as deadlifts and even just 
carries of different varieties and holds of different varieties. So here I'm showing a thick plated grip and I'm pinching that grip and holding as much as I can here for as long as I can, which is very challenging. If you've never tried a pinch grip um, hold, they are very, very difficult and take a little bit of getting used to. Now, if you don't have a thick plate that you can use to grip onto, this one's perfect because it has nothing to hold onto. I really have to work at squeezing that plate as much as I can. But if you don't have that at home, I've also done it with you know firewood so if you have firewood outside you can grab a, the end of that log and carry that log from side to side or anything that's wide and heavy that you can get your hands on that's going to benefit you in overall being able to generate that force to pinch and squeeze so we need to be able to create that crushing effect through the hands through the forearms and build strength that way and of course just a standard farmer's carry is one of the best ways to do this so gripping as tight as you can on those holds and going heavy with those carries do not be afraid to pick up weight and see how long you can even just hold it because that in itself will functionally set you up for success as well as build that overall grip strength and shoulder health in the long run in turn all right and there you guys have it my go-to mobilities for the hand, wrist, forearm, to keep everything functioning from that hand up to the elbow at its highest there, especially with all the grip work that we do in the gym all the time. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping those hands functioning well so that we can maximize our ability to grip there and create the most torsion through the system of the arm overall. That is a huge piece of it. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who also is in the gym a lot, doing a lot of grip work. You know they need it, so pass it along. If you guys have any questions about anything that I show today, please drop those down below in the comments. And if you have not already, take advantage of that seven day mobility training challenge, which is also linked down below in the description here. Once again, 15 minute sessions, no equipment necessary and a litmus test from head to toe, missing range of motion, missing flexibility, and the stability and motor patterning that might be missing there as well. So a guided approach that you can take advantage of for completely free, just gotta sign up and get started today. Last but not least, before we go, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll see you guys next week.